I'm Pastor Kurt DeWire, one of the pastors at Martin Luther Chapel here in East Lansing and the president of the MSU Religious Advisors Association. We're a group of religious professionals from a wide variety of organizations that are dedicated to serving the students, the faculty, and staff here at MSU. And I'm humbled and honored that I've been entrusted with this opportunity to say a few words this evening. We are gathered tonight, first of all, to remember those we have lost. Ariel Anderson, Brian Fraser, Alexandria Werner. We are gathered tonight to pray for those who are hospitalized and recovering. We are gathered here tonight to comfort those who may have escaped physical injury, but who are wounded in spirit. And finally, we are gathered here tonight so that we can care for one another. There's a well-known verse from the book of Ecclesiastes that says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Tonight is our time to mourn. Tonight is our time to weep. And tonight is our time to grieve. Tonight and in the coming days as you process the events of the last few days, know that there are people and resources that are available to help and support you in that process. Here tonight, in the northwest corner of our gathering, are many counselors, several members of the Religious Advisors Association, and a bunch of therapy dogs, all here to support you and to care for you. If you need immediate emotional support, please go find someone to talk to. They're all here to help, whatever your background, whatever your experience, whatever form your grief may take. You are not alone. Those verses that I read from Ecclesiastes remind us that this is a time to grieve and mourn, and we need this time. But as real as this time is, and as many tears as we may shed, however sharp we might feel this grief, those verses also remind us that the time that we grieve will give way to another time. As we honor and remember, as we honor those that we remember tonight in this time, we also remember them by what we do in the time ahead. In this time of weeping and mourning, we also remember that we honor them when it comes time to return to the classroom or the lab or the office. The students that we remember here tonight came to MSU to learn more about this world in the hope that they might make it a better place. And we honor them and their legacy by continuing to do ourselves what they came to do, learning and exploring this good creation and working and serving in whatever way we can that we might make this world a better place. The time will come, perhaps sooner than we realize. I recognize that the faith that I represent may not be the same as many who are here this evening. But allow me just a moment to express the hope that I have. I have hope in a God who is the author of life and who grieves with us now because he knows the pain that is caused by death. I have hope in a Savior, Jesus, who through his death and resurrection have defeated death and evil and will one day make all things new. I have hope in the Holy Spirit, who gives me strength and courage to endure even the darkest days. I share that to say that my faith does not take away the grief that I experience today. 
but it does give me the sure and certain hope for another time, even in the midst of grief and mourning and weeping. My prayer for all of you in the midst of your grief and pain is that you also will have the sure and certain hope of a better time that will follow the darkness of this current moment. Take this time, whatever time you need, to weep, to grieve, in whatever way, in whatever way you need to. Take the time to get support from friends, family, counselors, religious organizations, or even simply by petting a dog. And know that no matter how deep your grief is in this time, as Ecclesiastes reminds us, there will be a time to laugh and to dance. It may not be tonight, but we honor their lives by grieving and by laughing at the proper time. May God grant you peace in this day and always. Now I would like to introduce our governor, Gretchen Whitmer. Tonight I'm here as governor, as a mom of two college kids, as a fellow Spartan, as a fellow Michigander. We know that there is no such thing as a quiet, shy Spartan, right? We'll take this moment and live the action in memory of those that we lost and those that are fighting for their lives. We Spartans show up and represent MSU everywhere. From our cars, to our hats, to our mugs, if there's merch that exists, we own it. And you can spot us a mile away, and if you don't see us, you hear us, because we say go green. Everyone remembers the excitement you feel during Welcome Week, cherishing the years on the banks of the Red Cedar. We really, really love this place, and you can see it in how we treat one another and how we show up for one another. And I think that's what makes this moment so much more painful. Our Spartan community is reeling this week, and our lives and our hearts break for those lives that were shattered by gun violence. We mourn Ariel and Al, as she was known to her loved ones, and Brian, who were taken from us far too soon. We think about their families, recalling their last visit home, we hurt for their friends who are remembering their last conversation or maybe rereading text messages. And we are hoping for those who are fighting for their lives in the hospital. And we hold each other closer. We also recognize that gun violence is a uniquely American problem. Too many places in our nations that are supposed to be about learning and community or joy have been shattered by bullets and stained by bloodshed. Yesterday was the fifth anniversary of the Parkland shooting. A few weeks ago, it was a dance hall in California, and less than a year ago, an elementary school in Texas. Countless other shootings between grocery stores and houses of worship, parades, bars, workshops, and city centers. And Michiganders are no stranger to this pain. A little over a year ago, we lost four young souls at Oxford High. There are students who lived through that, the worst day of their lives, only to go and experience it again here. There's a student at MSU today who lived through Sandy Hook as a child and relived it again two nights ago. We shouldn't have to live like this. We shouldn't have to subconsciously scan every room for an exit go through the grim exercise of figuring out who our last call would be to. Our campuses, churches, classrooms, and communities should not be battlefields. And so it's okay if you feel frustrated or angry or sad because we are the only country in the world where guns are the number one killer of young people. Tonight feels heavy. In our darkest moments, we need to find the light Sometimes it's in one another. We saw the light in the medical professionals at Sparrow who cared for victims. 
So many off-duty nurses and doctors showed up without being called. They had to turn some of them away. We saw that light in the law enforcement who rushed into harm's way, putting their lives on the line to secure campus. Officers came as far away from o as Oakland County, where Oxford is. We saw that light in MSU students. Countless Spartans were heroes, letting others into their dorms, barricading rooms, hiding in dark closets, holding each other's hands, calling in tips. And I'll tell you, I met with two survivors today, one of whom told me he wanted me to share with you that a fellow Spartan took off his shirt and pressed on his chest and saved his life. And we saw that light in Michigan parents who showed the power of their love through their actions. Many came and are here today wanting nothing more than to hold their kids tight and tell them it's going to be okay. Your colleague in the hospital said he's going to dedicate his life to teaching and fighting gun violence. But the truth is, it's not going to be okay with just words. And the time for only prayers and thoughts is over. The Rock yesterday said, how many more? How many more grieving parents and kids? How many more cities and towns and schools will be shorthand for shootings? How many more until we work together on common sense reform? We don't know, but what we do know is we can't continue to live like this. We know that we will keep showing up for one another. We know that we will keep working to keep you safe and we won't stop until the job is done. And we know there is much goodness and light in this community, and it outshines the darkness. And we know that we are Spartan strong. I want to end tonight with a story. I spoke to the father of one of the victims yesterday. He told me about his beautiful, driven daughter. She was home last weekend and couldn't stop talking about how much she loved this campus and this school. She had that look in her eyes that so many of us do when we talk about MSU. She was exactly where she wanted to be. Society in this country has failed her and failed you. She won't get to go to another basketball game or graduate from the school that she loved the most. It's unacceptable and we cannot let it stand. I will do everything in my power to make sure that those we've lost are not just numbers or stories to be forgotten in a week or month from now. We are in a unique position to take action, to save lives, and that's exactly what we are going to do. And we will heed the words of Alexandria, who we lost, and had some advice for some underclassmen in her high school yearbook. She wrote, today may be hard, but tomorrow will be better. Together, let's make sure that tomorrow is better. I love you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Rima Vassar, and I am the chair of the Board of Trustees here at MSU. And my colleagues, Trustee Tebe, Trustee Scott, Trustee Denno, and Trustee Kelly are all here to support you. Run, hide, or fight. Run, hide, or fight. This was the alert that was given to all of Spartans across the campus. When I sent my baby here to MSU, I knew she'd have a lot of messages. I thought maybe she'd get a message about her homework not being done, but I'm sure that's not true, right, Renaya, wherever you are? She you got your homework done. Maybe she'd get a message about a party. 
or an opportunity to volunteer, I didn't think she would get an, a message about how to keep her life. Over the past five years, there have been a reported 93,376 gun-related deaths. 180,803 injuries. In one week, February 4th through 10th of this year, 354 deaths, 592 injuries. There are a number of reasons right, for these stats. Premeditated acts of aggression, domestic violence, disputes, suicides. I'm not here to argue gun policy. We know something is wrong. And I also know that Spartans are the people to find sophisticated solutions to complex problems. Problems in urban planning, healthcare, urban policy, social work, economic justice, education, et cetera. We know Spartans will. Spartans in DC, Arkansas, California, China, South Africa. We have a global community who can bring about solutions. I believe in the transformative power of education to quite literally change the world. I'm a lifelong educator. I know education can do this. And we know Spartans are strong. We know this. We know Spartans will. I have full faith in our global community to help with these issues that brought us here today. But first, can we just center love? In agape love, that has restorative power, a radical love that can lift us from depths of despair and sadness, a brave love that drives away fear. Can we center love? I study love, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Jesus, Prince. I have two charges for you. The first charge is to love yourself. The second is to love one another. Love yourself first and everything else falls into line. You really have to love yourself to get anything done in the world. This is from the late, great Lucille Ball. Grief is personal, as the interim president said in her video. It is personal. You have to commit yourself to yourself. Give yourself grace. And I'm talking to myself as I talk to you, please know. I have a tendency to retreat, to close off when I'm sad. Do what you need to do to take care of yourselves. You have to love yourself first, but then you need to love each other. Love is more than three words mumbled before bedtime. Love is sustained by action, a power and pattern of devotion and the things that we do for each other every day. Nicholas Sparks tells us that we need to love each other. His grief is also communal. We all have experienced this tragedy together. We all have gone through something that shakes and rocks our very world, that, that questions our security, that makes us afraid. I often talk about transformative leadership. Well, that leadership which centers equity and justice and belonging, it's rooted in love, transformative love, a love that is gentle, a soft love, a restorative love, a healing love. Give that love to yourself and then give it to one another. Love is light. Light drives out all matters of darkness. Remember, when we stumble, we all stumble, every one of us. That's why it's better to go hand in hand. It's better to walk together. Walk into the bright green light that needs to shine for the world to see, supporting one another, loving one another, giving grace to one another. We have a selection from two students performance of Amazing Grace. I 
Phoenix Miranda and Jordan Anderson. Thank you so much, Phoenix and, and Jordan and, and Jose. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. And thank you, Governor Whitmer and Chairperson Vassar and Chaplain Dwyer for your remarks. And thank you all for joining us tonight at this vigil. Australian poet Nan Whitcomb once said, we do not have to rely on memories to recapture the spirit of those we have loved and lost. They live within our souls in some perfect sanctuary which even death cannot destroy. Tonight, we remember and honor the three Spartan students 
so cruelly taken from their families and friends and from us less than 48 hours ago. Each came to East Lansing to join this very special, this extraordinary university community. Alexandria was noted for her engagement and kindness. Brian was a leader in our Greek community. And Ariel was headed toward a career of service as a physician. As we enfold their family, friends, and classmates in our united embrace, let us each honor their character and their dreams by making them part of our own. They will be Spartans forever. Let us also pause at this moment and send our prayers and humble utterances to the heavens for those struggling to recover from their wounds. Our prayers are also with the hands of our sparrow doctors and nurses still working to comfort and to heal. I give my voice as the proxy of your many voices in gratitude to the hundreds of law enforcement and first responders who answered our call, tended to the injured, kept the community informed, and brought this ordeal to an end. Our pain and grief, words and hope, must be that clarion call to build a more hopeful tomorrow. To MSU, but also to the nation, let us create a new future together. As our presence here tonight demonstrates, there is comfort and hope in the community of the bereaved, for we are not alone. We are joined tonight by countless others on digital channels as well as in spirit through the many messages of condolences we have received. In the last two days, there's been an outpouring of support from President Biden and the First Lady and other officials, from federal students and university leaders across the state and the country. How beautiful it has been to see others wearing our colors and illuminating their own campus landmarks in green. And to hear our songs resound from bell towers afar. In our collective grief, hope, and resolve, we are truly a Spartan nation. Let us continue to find strength and hope in our community of Spartans. Let us keep our resolve in our heads and in our hearts as we reclaim our campus, your campus, for MSU's mission of transformation. As we gather on this blustery February dusk, this stirring passage of our alma mater comes to mind. MSU, we love thy shadows when twilight silence falls, flushing deep and softly paling or ivy-covered halls. Beneath the pines we'll gather to give our faith so true. Thank you all for being so true. Thank you all for gathering with us to reaffirm our love for MSU and for those that we have lost. And now I want to introduce a leader known to you all as someone else who speaks from the heart, MSU head basketball coach, Tom Izzo.
Wow. Um, I normally speak more off the cuff, but uh, you're following the governor and the president and doctors, and, and you're just a basketball coach. I decided to put a little more into it. So I'd like to start by offering my condolences on behalf of my family, Lupe and Stephen, Raquel, and Stephen was at one of the buildings two nights ago, about 10 minutes after things happened. So sometimes we don't understand because we haven't been through it. That little moment brought me a little closer to understanding. But as well as our entire university community who was impacted by the horrific actions Monday night, I'm representing our athletic department and I feel like Michigan State my 40th year here. I don't like the place. I don't love the place. I live the place. To the families of those who were senselessly taken from us, words seem so hollow right now. To the individuals currently fighting for their lives in a hospital and their families, we're praying for you and I know that my wife and I got a chance to go to the hospital. I know Governor Whitmer was there, and I know our president was there. And unbelievable people. There are so many good people in the world, the doctors, the nurses. Although, for me, I'm also a father of two Spartans of my own. I can't begin to imagine what all of you are going through. But I do know that we, as a campus community, can offer our support both to you and to each other. Look around. Look next to you. Shake somebody's hand. Introduce yourself to someone you don't know. That's what we are. And that's what we need to be at this time. I'd like to offer a special thank you, as all have, to our first responders who seem to get paid little and asked to put their life on the line each and every day, as I've learned through my own assistant coach not that long ago. The coordinated response from law enforcement from around the state, from the FBI to the EMS to the hospitals, was nothing short of remarkable. And to the students who listened to the shelter in place, Directive, your ability to follow protocol, even in the face of fear, was incredible. If you use that throughout your life, it will be helpful. I won't be long, but I did want to offer a few words that someone, that some of you will hopefully find helpful. Michigan State is my home. Everyone thinks I'm a youper. Yes, that's where I came from. But virtually all of my adult life, I've been a Spartan. I've seen some incredible highs. And yes, unfortunately, there have been some devastating lows. But as a Spartan, we always get through it together. We're Spartan tough, Spartan strong. If you need proof, Look at us all standing here tonight, each and every one of us. We've come for many different reasons, to heal, to grieve, to honor our victims, to stand up to fear, which you're gonna have to do a lot in your life. Whatever you're feeling, it's all valid. Emotions are different for each and every person. I cry in front of my team, I cry on national TV. Don't be afraid to show your emotions. We all process trauma in a very different way. I'm just glad we're all here together tonight. So let me close with the challenge. Let's all do a better job taking care of one another. Through no fault of our own, but COVID has led us to all feel a little more separated from one another. It drives me crazy. We need each other. 
For 40 years, I've always believed that at Michigan State, we are at our own strongest when we're together. In athletics, the best teams are always greater than the sum of their individual parts. The same is true for our community. Governor Whitmer, you should be proud that, you know, not only did our police, not only did our hospitals, but just the individuals in our community all band together at this incredible university that I have given most of my life to and have a lot more to give in the future. If any of you need help, please speak up. Be vulnerable. Don't be afraid. It's no secret that I do wear my emotions on my sleeve, so I'm not afraid. Our hearts are heavy. Our losses have been great. Our lives have been permanently changed. But with a shared commitment to help each other and a promise to remember those we have lost, we will learn to find joy once again. I think everybody spoke that something has to be done in our society. Gun violence is insane right now. We all have a platform. Some are small, some are high. But we all have a platform. And I hope each and every one of you use your platform to help others so other families don't have to go what these families are going through now. I appreciate everybody being here. And before you leave, I hope you meet the 10 people around you and become closer. The world needs it. Michigan State needs it. The grieving time needs it. I need it. Now it's my privilege to introduce two of our incredible student leaders. And that's what we need, more leaders. Please welcome Joe and Hannah to the platform. Do good. There's so much that I would love to say right now, but I am numb, and so the words won't come out. I'll have to read from my prepared speech instead. Still, all I can see sometimes are teddy bears the blankets that swaddled those young victims when they were young. I can feel the warmth of the milk that awaited for them in the microwave to help them go to sleep. Remember, everyone, that these problems affect our generation. And we are the new generation. You have the power. In the darkest of times, what we can offer as the Michigan State University graduate and professional student government is, to, is support for one another. Me and some of my colleagues stand here today united with the undergraduate students of MSU in our shared desire for a safe campus. We also share profound grief in the lives lost and express our deepest sympathies to their families. Say their names. And with those directly impacted by Monday's senseless act of violence, and many more. We are thankful to the MSU police and first responders 
who are there for us in our time of need. To all those who are scared right now, please know that the Council of Graduate Students is here for you. We will work together to ensure that a safe campus is possible. Never, ever underestimate the power of the MSU community. In the coming days and weeks, people will rightfully question whether it is safe to come to campus anymore. But Michigan State University is a place with many strong communities and a dedicated, excuse me. There are many resources here for you. And we will make sure that you will not fall through the cracks. In times of despair, I have found so much solidarity and support that I know even if I could not see the way in front of me that there would be someone to help me move forward. Just yesterday, I saw countless flower bouquets outside the Sparty statue, Berkey, MSU Union. Those flowers reminded me of the strength of our campus. Your candles, I apologize, there's no candles, it's set set my heart aflame with compassion and the desire to protect my fellow Spartans. But these are not stopgap solutions. We plan to call for action as communities as unique and special as ours are worth protecting. Please join us as we call out to every Michigan State student, past, present, and future and to our entire Lansing community to let them know that we stand together as one to help each other in these dark times. Together, we are Spartan strong. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Kovach, and I am the undergraduate student body president here at Michigan State. I know that I won't be able to make it through this without tears, so I apologize in advance. <sighs> to my fellow students, my wonderful, amazing Spartans, it is okay to not be okay right now. No matter where you were or what you were doing, you are completely valid in feeling whatever it is you are feeling at this moment and whatever you are going to feel for the foreseeable future. This is our home, and we went through the unimaginable. We lost three beautiful souls who we attend classes with, are friends with, are in clubs with. Their absence on this campus and in this world will forever be felt. Ariel, Alexandria, and Brian. Ariel wanted to become a doctor, to help others her entire life. Her family and friends say she had an infectious smile. She was a hard worker with plans to graduate early. And she was a beautiful soul who lit up every room she entered. Alexandria was studying biology. Her friends and family say she was one of the kindest people that you could ever meet. She was a leader in her community and a talented athlete throughout high school. Alexandria was tremendously loved by everyone who knew her, and she made a mark in every space she entered. Brian was the president of Phi Delta Theta. I'm sure many of his brothers are here tonight to honor him because of what a fantastic leader, friend, and brother he was to the brotherhood. Brian's high school swimming and diving coach says that he had a sense of humor that could light up the pool deck and bring laughter to his entire team. Brian's sister in the Free Press article reminded everyone to tell those around you just how much you love them. Check in with them today. These beautiful, amazing Spartans were taken from this world senselessly, but they will never be forgotten by each and every one of us here tonight. They have touched the lives of thousands of Spartans and this campus for hundreds of years to come. And for the five Spartans at Sparrow Hospital right now, we are sending you all of our love and support, and we hope for quick healing and resiliency for each one of you. And for students, it is okay to grieve and mourn however you feel comfortable doing so. 
There's no rule book telling you what to do in these situations. We just have to live each day from here on out, reaching out for help when we need it and getting through the harder days together. I know there's a lot of media here right now and it's easy to feel like your grief is a sideshow attraction for the nation. You do not owe anybody anything, especially not the media, not the people asking for your story. You only owe yourself the time to process and to grieve. There will never be a return to normal. This event has changed what that will feel like for us forever, but that's okay. If there's one thing I know and love about Spartans, it is that in times of need, we come together. Hear you all right now, coming together. And that is what we will continue to do for the foreseeable future. Check in on your fellow Spartans, be there for one another, and be there for yourselves. I love each and every one of you more than I could ever describe, and although things feel really scary right now, and I am angry at the world, and I don't even know how to process my own emotions, being with you all here right now heals me more than you could ever imagine. I cannot tell you how we go forward, but I will tell you that Spartans will heal together. Forever and always, go green. As we bring this time now to a close this evening, as everyone has said, I remind you again, there are many resources available to you as you go through this time of grieving and mourning. This evening, there are many here to help support you and to care for you in this time. If you look around, there are counselors here. They have orange hats on or orange ribbons. They're here to talk, to listen, to you talk. Colleagues of mine from the religious advisors are here. Look for their name tags. Whatever your background, they're here to listen. Our grief may be personal, but we are never alone. We are a community. We are here for one another in this time and in the time to come. Go now in peace and care for one another. As we close, please join in singing MSU Shadows.